Hello everyone, this is a how to use guide for the uh, mutual fund performance consistency screener data that I presented uh, a couple of days ago. So this is the main uh, screener screen and as you can see that I have enabled the Excel data sort function here. This can be used to uh, perform the screening. Uh, before we uh, get started, the first thing I'd like to uh, mention is that when you want to screen mutual funds or stocks or any, any securities, the objective should be to shortlist. You have about 400, 500 securities and the objective should be to shortlist about 10 or 15 or even 20 uh, mutual funds from that huge list. The objective should not be to, uh, to try and set the filters such that you get one or two funds. That's, this is not a selection process. This is a shortlisting process. So you should, from the shortlist, you can explore each of those funds in detail and then pick one of them. So the kind of filters that you set should uh, generally be uh, uh, wide so that you get um, many entries in your shortlist. So um, in the uh, data sort, you can first go to category and you can click this uh, gray square here. And if you can see here in this filter, if you unselect all the categories and then go, go down and just say you select EQLC, that is equity large cap then you will see only large cap funds listed. So you can screen within a category with this, but for the purpose of this uh, video, I will remove this filter and I will simply select all. So you can ha you have the category here, the fund, the benchmark use. This is not necessary, but this is just for your reference. And uh, the gray columns represent three year data, three year rolling return data. That is for every possible three year period from April, 3rd, 2006 to uh, October 26th, 2016, the screening has taken place. So, uh, sorry, the rolling return calculation has, uh, has been uh, performed. Sorry about that. Uh, so, you can see here, uh, there are 27, for the first fund, there are 27 uh, rolling return, uh, three-year rolling return, so it's, it's a recent fund, and there are 1872 index uh, th three-year return data point. So, so out of this, it has outperformed. Out of all those 27 times, it has outperformed. So the consistency score is 100%. So uh, is 27 upon 27. So, and similarly for the others. So you can see uh, I have sorted this by uh, uh, in descending order. You can do that in ascending also. So you can see that there are funds with very poor consistency score. So you have this uh, Baroda Pioneer PSE equity fund, which is uh, basically outperformed only 127 out of 753. So there are seven, 753 three-year three year returns, but only 127 of that has, uh, uh, the fund has outperformed the index. So the consistency is only about 17%. So, so the, uh, the, the gray, columns represent three-year data, the green columns represent five-year data, and uh, what color is that? That's kind of light brown represent uh, seven-year data. So you can set up a simple screen in the following way. I will say, I'll go to this three years consistency score and say, I want greater than 70% or 75% consistency, greater than 75%. And so you can look at all the data, but you, I would suggest that you also consider the number of three-year periods, uh, three-year return periods. For example, you may have only 288 three-year return data points, so it's a very recent fund. Whereas if it, if it has 1,600 or 1,800, that means it's a much more older fund. So you, the age of the fund also can be observed from the number of data available. And uh, similarly, I can set a consistency for five years as well. So I can set greater than 75% and notice now that the list has become much shorter. I can go over here and also do the same for the seven year consistency score. And now you see the list has become much shorter. So it's about only uh, how many of them are here about 15 or 20 funds. So all these have got very good uh, consistency. Consistency here only means that the fund has outperformed the chosen index. Now, 
please remember that these indices are not the actual benchmark that the AMC has chosen, but these are my choices. Uh, you can always tell me if these choices are wrong. I can uh, consider correcting them in the next month's uh, screener data list. But the, uh, in my opinion, these are all uh, total return indices and they are quite appropriate. Uh, uh, in my opinion, they are appropriate for uh, comparison. And uh, you are very, uh, except uh, quantum, I don't know any AMC which uses a total return index. That is the index in which the dividends are assumed to be pre-invested. So it's, the, it's much more tougher to beat by about 1 or 2 percent. So this is a very simple way you can do the screening in. Uh, this is only outperformance consistency. Okay, this is not, uh, for example, if the index is not done anything, uh, it is given minus 5% return. The fund, if the fund is given minus 2% return, that means it has outperformed the index. So it may not be the uh, return that you want, but it is still outperformed the index. So this is only an outperformance uh, uh, score and an outperformance screener. Uh, you should also look at returns separately and you, you can also have you can also consider downside protection separately so those are all different screens but uh, consistent uh, outperformance consistency is a very simple way uh, that anybody can understand and quickly do the screening so you can see that this screening will take you only about uh, five minutes in less than five minutes you will have funds and here i have this is all for all categories if you uh, if you uh, get rid of uh, several categories and look at only the ones that you want then the screening becomes so much more simpler and you will be you will end up having only two or three funds in your uh, in your category uh, so even a 75 percent screen is still pretty uh, stringent i would say so please let me know if you have any feedback on this video thank you